For the first question, we need to perform this calculation using standard arithmetic, and then we'll perform this calculation using a calculator that rounds all numbers after calculation to three places to the right of the decimal point. The first step of both of these are the same. We would add these two numbers together and get the following. If we were using normal arithmetic, we would then simply add the denominator, receiving this, which is negative 5,000. However, instead, if we were to use a calculator which rounded to three places to the right of the decimal place after every calculation, we would instead get this in the denominator, which is equal to negative 1,000. You can see that this round off error, while may seem insignificant for most calculations, can become very significant in some circumstances. And this is something that you need to be aware of when doing any kind of numerical calculations. This is the answer to question 1a and question 1b. Question 2 asks, if the trajectories that your OD solver produces with h equals 0 0.1 do not change, when you change the time step to h equals 0 0.05, then h equals 0 0.01 is probably a good choice. And this is true. This is equivalent to saying, if you take one step with one step size versus taking two steps with half the step size, if you get to the same point, there's no point in taking two steps, you're just doing extra work. And in this circumstance, h equals 0 0.1 was probably sufficient. So this question is true. Question 3 is almost identical to question 2, but it goes in the other way of adaptation. That is, if you have a step size of 0 0.1, and then you try a step size of 0 0.2, and you don't see any change, then a step size of 0 0.2 is probably a good choice. This is true by the exact same logic as question 2. For question 4, if the trajectories that your OD solver produces change when you increase the precision of all the variables, that is going from like single precision to double precision arithmetic, then the computer's arithmetic is introducing dynamical error into the solver's results. This is true. This is exactly what's happening. The error being caused in single precision arithmetic, for example, is being fed back into the system at every time step. That error would then snowball, causing dynamical error. If you wanted to, you could also call this round off or truncation error, but it is absolutely also dynamical error. These types of error do not need to be mutually exclusive, and these different kinds of errors can often compound, causing even greater error. Question 5 asks, if the system's derivative affects the error of any OD solver solution to that system, this is also true. For example, consider the error for forward Euler. You can see that the form of the system derivative plays into the error. While this error does not hold for any OD solver, this general statement does hold true. The system's derivative does affect the error of any OD solver solution to a system. 